Hello. In this lesson, we will learn how to play a thrilling jazz solo over the 251 progression in C major using some very simple but awesome pentatonic techniques. Let me demonstrate the sound we can make when we have learned these techniques. In the right hand, I use a very simple pentatonic technique. We will learn that technique in this lesson. When performing a solo, I like when we can make something thrilling, but with simple means and simple tools. The stuff we are playing may actually be quite complicated, but we should not think complicated when performing. It's all about finding the simple tools that unfolds the music. In that way we can concentrate our mental energy on the feelings and the music itself. So, in this lesson, we will find some simple tools for the 251 chord progression. By the way, this is a new jazz lesson, and my name is Oliver Prehn. Okay. Above the keyboard, we have the 251 chords in C major. D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. The 251 chord progression is the most used chord progression when playing jazz standards. So, learning techniques on how to improvise over this chord progression is almost inevitable. Before moving on to the right hand improvisation, we will quickly learn the left hand walking bass. This walking bass is simple and it is nice to be able to make some easy grounding when trying out improvisation stuff in the right hand, okay? So we just have to check out this walking bass. On every chord, we play the key note and the fifth. And on the last beat of the chord, we play a leading note to the next chord. That's it. So, we play the bass like this. Key, fifth, key, leading, key, fifth, key, leading, key, fifth, key, fifth, key, fifth, key, leading. This is a very easy walking bass that can be used in many cases when playing a jazz standard. Maybe some will call it a cheating bass, but it sounds great, I think, and we just need a simple, steady bass line to make the grounding for our right hand improvisation. I recommend that you practice this walking bass a lot. It has to run all by itself. It may not it may not be distracted by anything. So if you for example talk nonsense like I do right now, the left hand must keep on the steady walk, right? So Practice this walk bass a lot and you will be ready to make improvisation stuff in the right hand also. Okay, now it's time to move on to the really exciting stuff. We will learn how to make thrilling improvisation in the right hand using some simple tools. 
Here we got the D minor pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale is very handy because it contains five notes, like the number of the fingers on the hand. So we have a note for each finger. One, two, three, four, five. So we can have the entire pentatonic scale inside our hand. This grip on the pentatonic scale we entitle the pentatonic hand grip. It is with this pentatonic hand grip that we are going to make some thrilling improvisation. The pentatonic hand grip can be placed anywhere on the keyboard. For example here, or here, or here. When placing the pentatonic hand grip, we use our thumb as a pointer. So this is a pentatonic hand grip on D, because the thumb is on the note D. And this is a pentatonic hand grip on A. And here we have the hand grip on E. Now it's all about finding the correct positions for the thumb. So let's place a green marker on the note D. A. And E. So, what are these green markers for? Do you already know? The green markers simply tell us where to place the thumb of the pentatonic hand grip. Ah, so we can place our hand grip with the thumb on this key, and we can place the hand grip here and here. Let's try to improvise when using the pentatonic hand grip with the thumb on the green markers. Now we are just fooling around using the pentatonic hand grip at the different green positions. All three positions can be used no matter what chord we play. So this is a very easy way to perform a 2-5-1 solo, right? And this works great. But we are not done yet. We can add a lot of stuff to this technique. I will show you later in this lesson. Okay, notice that the green markers are all related and spaced with the perfect fifth. Perfect fifth and perfect fifth. The keynote of the first chord in the 2-5-1 progression makes the starting point of this fifth row of pentatonic hand grips. So if we play 2-5-1 in C, then the first chord is D minor, right? And then we let the row start from the D note. This is a very easy way to locate the positions of the pentatonic hand grip, right? We just take the key note from the step 2 chord and start the row of penta pentatonic hand grips from there. We don't have to play the row of pentatonic hand grips in order like this. We can mix around the positions. 
For example, we can also play the E position here. So the row of pentatonic hand grips is mostly a mnemonic rule to locate the positions. Okay, here's the big question. What are we actually playing? What are, what are the scales in use? Let's try to find out. So we try to gather all the notes when playing the row of pentatonic hand grips. Now look, we actually play all the white keys, right? Let's gather the white keys. So what scale is this? Well, when we have D in the bass, we play the D Dorian scale. When we have G in the bass, we play the G Mixolydian. And when we have C in the bass, we play the C Ionian. In another lesson from New Jazz, we learn a lot more about these church modes. I will paste a link to that lesson in the description below if you need to dig deeper into that subject. The Dorian, Mixo and Ionian scale are often used when improvising over the 2-5-1 in major. The advantages of playing these scales with the pentatonic hand grip are that we avoid just playing the scale stepwise up and down. Instead, we break up the scales in well-defined pentatonic patterns. And I just like the sound when we do that. It's a method to gain the control of the scales. Well, there are still a lot of things we can do to make our improvisation even more interesting and thrilling. So, stay tuned! If we play the pentatonic hand grip on D, we have this note F in our second finger. This note goes fine when playing the D minor chord. And it goes fine in the G chord. But then we come to the C chord. And the note may seem wrong. Can you hear? It's a little harsh. It's because the F note makes a clash against the major third E note from the C chord. So, what to do? Well, this F note is in some music theory books called an avoid note. And we can of course just avoid playing the pentatonic hand grip on D when playing the C major chord. Then we are sure not to play the F note. And we have no problems, right? But if we suddenly forget, and we accidentally hit the F note anyway, no harm is done. We just resolve that F note to the, uh, the E note, like this. So when we are at the C major chord, it is not necessarily so dangerous to hit the F note. Don't be afraid. If we do so, we can just resolve that note, like it was all on purpose. I actually think this sounds great, both the tension and the resolution. Don't you agree? We can also do something completely different. We can just move the entire row of pentatonic hand grips up with a fifth. So let's add some new B 
blue markers. A. E. And B. So here we have another row of pentatonic hand grips. Still, the grips are spaced with a perfect fifth. If we play the pentatonic hand grip at the blue markers, we play the C Lydian scale. Listen. Wow, what a bright tonic sound, right? The Lydian scale goes great together with the tonic C major 7 chord. And the F note is now augmented to the F sharp note. This F sharp note does not have this harsh clashing sound. So this is simple. When playing the C major chord, we can just avoid the pentatonic hand grip on D and instead add the hand grip on the note B. Let's hear how this goes. Notice, it's only when playing the C chord that we play the blue row. When we perform the solo, we do not have to think about the scales in use. We just follow the markers on the keys and play the pentatonic hand grip on these markers. That's it. When not performing, we can talk scale theory and make reflections and make things complicated. That's totally all right. But now, when performing, we try to make things simple in our mind. So we just follow the markers and enjoy our music. Okay, playing arpeggio on the chords this is a very common thing to do when improvising jazz. The thing is that we can easily do that by using our pentatonic hand grip. If we just leave out the third finger, we can actually play arpeggio all the way up the chords to the very last 13th extension. And this sounds really cool. So, on the D minor chord, we can play arpeggio on this huge and nice D minor 13 chord using the hand grip on the green markers. Look, we play the D minor 13 chord in steps of thirds all the way up. Again, we do not think D minor 13 when playing. We just think at the hand grip, the green markers, and that we have to leave out the third finger. And then this huge 13 chord appears all by itself. On the next chord, we play arpeggio on the huge and nice G13 chord. And when we hit the C chord, 
we can play Arpeggio on the blue row. And this is my favorite. The Lydian C major 7 13 sharp 11th chord. And again. These chords may seem complicated. But when performing, we should not think about these advanced chords. Instead, we only think about the pentatonic hand grip and the markers. And the chord appears automatically. That's very smart. So, music theory about the scales and the chord expansions is for reflection. The hand grip is for performance. Okay? Advanced theory is reflection. Simple tools as the hand grips are performance. Well, now we are ready to go wild. We will pep up the improvisation further, so that will be fun. Now I will show you a super cool trick we can use when playing the G7 chord. We simply lift the green pentatonic row up a tritone interval. So let's put some silver markers on the lifted positions. A flat, E flat, and B flat. So how does this sound? Well, we got a lot of tension now on the G chord, right? And when we hit the C chord, we have a lot of consonant stable sound. I think it is totally okay sometimes to smash up the dominant chord, totally, to increase the tension. Then the resolution will be so much better when hitting the tonica C chord. This suspense and resolve technique also gives us a feeling of playing outside and inside the main tonality. A technique often used when improvising jazz. Okay, actually what we just did was that we played the Mixolydian scale on the substitute dominant chord. Let me show you. Here we have the G7 chord. If we transpose this chord with the tritone up or down, that's the same, we got the D flat 7 chord, the substitute dominant chord. Now, what we simply do is that we move the green row also with the tritone interval. And we got the silver row, right? So now we have moved both the chord and the markers, a tritone interval. So the green row is the G mixo, the silver row is the substitute dominant D flat mixo. If we want to, we can keep the G note in the bass, 
The bass player really doesn't care that the improvisation is going far out to the substitute. She stays on the G note. Let's start the improvisation and hear the sound again. Notice that we use the same hand grip and we place the fingers in the same way no matter on which marker we play the pentatonic hand grip. This makes the improvisation really easy for us. We just have to learn and master this single pentatonic hand grip. Then we are ready to make great improvisation in all tonalities. In another lesson from New Jazz, we make a lot of exercises with this pentatonic hand grip. And we dig deeper into the role of pentatonic hand grips and the church modes. I will paste a link to that lesson in the description below. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. You are, of course, always welcome to write questions in the comments below. I will try to answer as soon as possible. Okay, thanks for now and many warm regards from your music teacher, Oliver Prehn.